It's not the things inside my head that keep me going Don't need someone to throw me money, they should show it Keep chasing shadows, they're always haunting me But I believe in something bigger Morning everyone. Uh, it is Wednesday today and I'm going to see my coach again today. So we're going to be doing a hammy and glute session. We've actually hit every other body part other than hammies and glutes. Probably because hammies and glutes probably isn't my weak point. So we started with the things that I wanted to improve on the most. But we've hit everything else and I was like, we've been doing shoulders for a couple of weeks now because I was trying to bring up my delts. And I just thought, hey, I want to learn something new. Let's do a hammy and glute session. So he's like, all right, sweet, let's book it in. So we've changed my day from Thursday to Wednesday today just so that it can fit in with my schedule. Anyway, <laughs> I'll check in when I get there. I don't know if I'll film too much because, um, yeah, obviously I want to learn the new techniques and everything. But I'll see if you can um, get a little bit of footage of me training. Oh, my God. Look, this man, pretty leg. <laughs> Good is. Big coach, yeah, yeah. What we're gonna do here is he's gonna, as he's contracting up to his hamstring, he's lifting his knees off the bench and he's squeezing his glutes down, kind of like a seesaw. So as his glutes come down, his knees will come up, you hold the contraction and it'll lever through his hamstring. And the best way to get some growth through your hamstring is when you go nice and fast on the way up, a dense hard contraction, you wanna hold the squeeze and we use a four second eccentric. Check out those hammies. Good man. Drive it up, hold the squeeze, hold it right there. There we go. Now we want to, what we want to try and do here is as we get into the top, we want to drive as fast as we can with the contraction of our hamstring. So if you find that you're bouncing a little bit, it means that you're not contracting hammy as hard as you want. So drive it up. Now that we're fatiguing, we need to pump out up and down, eight reps. Ready, let's go. One, there's four reps now, two. Four reps is better than no reps. Three, four, five, three more reps. Six, two more. Seven, one more. He's trying to get into a, a, a forward lunging stance. So the top half of his body is from his hips up is like kind of the, the counterweight. His knee goes forward, so his knee bends in front of his toe there pretty much. And what he's doing under here is it's almost like a stiff like a deadlift. So his, his glutes are coming up and his knees are going backwards and it's applying tension on his hammy glute area. All the way through his entire hamstring actually. And it's constant tension, so he goes up, squeezes, back down there's no release so there's not much weight with this movement but because of the constant tension amplifies the workout through the hammy so in about 20 of these this is his right leg and then we'll go on to another superset with that right leg straight after this I'm gonna try as harder than it looks make sure your top half is bent over so it's as a counterweight one more superset the first initial we're gonna do for here is he's gonna have his leg go back straight and he's gonna tw twist at the hip Always point your toe. He's gonna to squeeze his hammy right up. Now what he's gonna try to do here, he's trying to squeeze his hammy right into the glute there. So imagine like your hamstring has like a tennis ball in, in your hamstring. You wanna stretch all the way down, you wanna put the ball to the bottom here, contract it all the way up, you wanna squeeze that ball right into your hamstring. You can kind of see that right there. Rock hard. Good, what about 20 of these. Same sort of thing, constant tension set into entire movement. As there's not much weight applied, you need to make sure that you're really focusing on keeping that tension. There's no release points. Contract, stretch. Contract, stretch. Then when you fatigue, just do a couple more. Let's go five more. One, two, three, four. All right, now you're going to do something like with his left leg. So this next exercise, Nath was basically pushing down on the weight and I was resisting it on the way up. So it's an eccentric version of a seated hamstring curl machine. And after we exhausted it for 20 reps, he then got me to do 30 partial reps where I swear to you, I've never felt so much pain in my hamstrings before because of the deep, deep burn that I got that went literally right up into my hip bone. So you kind of see it on the end of this clip because he only started recording halfway. But if you look at it closely, I'm in a world of pain 
and then we superseded it with this Swiss ball um, hamstring curl where you actually have to raise your hips up above parallel and then curl your legs underneath you. Now if you've tried these when you're fresh, you know how hard they are just because of the stabilization and the constant tension. But if you're supersetting this on the end of another exercise where you've already pre-exhausted your legs, you will feel it. Almost there, superset to short reps. Oh yeah. Fuck. Uh, let me out. Let me out. Uh, Alright, superset, let's go over on the ball now. The fit ball. Uh, the fit ball wants you. Let's go. I'm gonna lie down. Exactly. Now, what he's gonna do first, he's gonna squeeze his glutes up. That's gonna keep his body into like a plank. Now, as he's coming up now, he's gonna curl through his hamstrings. But the goal is to keep those glutes squeezed up. Now, if you don't keep those glutes up, you're gonna use your lower back. So, straighten your legs, pull the hammies. And at the same time, as your hammy is going up, your glutes going up. So you glutes and hammy at the same time. This is an awesome exercise for glutes and for hamstring. So we keep that balance. Three, three more, come on. One. Two. Last one. Cool. All right guys, so we're moving into doing some glute work. Now, we're doing a little, we're doing a few movements that I've never done before. They might look a little bit weird, but I'm gonna let Nathan explain them to you as I do them. I tell you what, my glutes are on fire, so keep this. All right, so what Eddie's doing here, as you can see, he's keeping his back round throughout the entire motion. Now, why we keep your back rounded is because we're trying to deactivate our back as well as activate our glutes. Now, a lot of people focus on activating a muscle, but they don't focus on deactivating the surrounding muscles. So focusing and making sure that your back is deactivated by rounding it is important. As he drops the weight, he drives his glutes from the bottom all the way up, holds the squeeze, and drops them all the way down, making sure that his back isn't pulling that weight. One thing you need to be careful for is as your back is rounded, what's going to happen is, is it opens up your vertebrae, which is up and down your back. Now, if any of that weight gets put through into your back, you can rupture a disc in your back. So really be careful to make sure that all that weight is driven through your glutes. It's a very short movement but the tension on the glutes is massive. Ready to drop them, decompress on the way down. So we're, right, we're doing here the sled, so it's almost like a stiff like a deadlift. What he's doing, he's walking on his heels and he's pushing every step he takes, he's pushing that weight through his hamstring and his glutes. The whole, whole idea of this movement is to kind of put as much weight as you can on with the contraction of your hamstring and glute and do it as fast as you can. If you find that the weight is in your quads or any other part of your body, then you're doing it wrong. So, stiff leg, deadlift, left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, right hamstring, left hamstring, and then you're just pushing the weight through there. And he doesn't know how to turn around that sled. He's never done that before. Sweating. Not the fittest bloke on the planet. Looks fit, but not that fit. He looks fit, but he's not that fit. All right, that'll do, Eddie. Don't, don't bust the nut. Anyway, he's gonna do one more, fuck it. I'm not messing around today. He's munted. Check out that sweat. Good hammy, good hammy. Alright, we're gonna superset again. I'm gonna head over to the soup machine. This is an odd exercise. One thing to keep in mind when you guys are doing any glute or hamstring work, keep in mind your lower back. Because the last thing you wanna do is a vertebrae injury. So he's going to do a set. So get that bar in nice position on the middle of your foot there. So find a little groove in your feet and your shoes. All right, now what Eddie's doing here, he's just squeezing his glutes on the way up. So on the way down, he's getting that nice stretch through his glute hamstring area. He's contracting his glutes from the bottom, driving up, squeezing the top and levering in the way down. Drives it, hold the squeeze there. Now leave it through your glutes and hamstring. Get that stretch and a fast switch. Good. The whole idea of this movement, go fast one, drive that up. Hold the squeeze, lever it down. Dry that up, hold the squeeze, lever it down. Now don't just squeeze the bottom part of your glute where his hands are, because everyone can squeeze that part. You really, really want to develop full round glutes. I want you guys to really focus on squeezing the top part of your glute, the glute med, which is the part closest to your back. Good, Eddie. He's pretty much done. A few more to go. All right. There we go. Puts his feet forward. 
that is a set done. If you find that you're getting a bit of lower back pain and things like that, it just means that your glutes are fatiguing and your hamstrings are fatiguing and your back wants to work. So either one, just take the weight off your back mentally, or two, just focus on not using your back. Feel the waves cut through me Hypnotized By the sounds I'm breathing in Hold tight, hold tight Can't make calls collide Hold tight, hold tight Hold tight Dripping lights Paint the skies All because of you God, look at my hammy. It's just popping. They're still kind of burning a little bit. Like I was driving home and my glutes were just on fire. Shit. All right, hope you guys enjoyed watching me get put through that killer workout. I just got home and I want to run you guys through what we did basically. I, like I said to you earlier, I like getting challenged and I like learning new ways to stimulate your muscles and just find new training techniques to add into your workouts. So yeah, I didn't really bother putting any music over that workout because I wanted you guys to get the most information from those movements because they're not your everyday kind of movements. Now in saying that, they might not be suitable for everyone. You know, they are quite advanced movements, but it is just a little bit of a different take um, that I wanted to add to my vlogs so that you guys can see what kind of training that I'm doing. It is a little bit more advanced, but it is just got, kind of gives you guys a fresh look at training and that we're kind of moving away from just the traditional like four sets of 10 on a certain exercise, resting and then doing that again. So we're kind of moving more towards a little bit more stimulation, higher rep work, drop sets and supersets. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm gonna go get a meal in me and then get the rest of the day started. All right, I've got my container with my Tuscan chicken breast, brown rice, cauliflower, green beans and carrot. And I'm gonna put a serving of sweet chili light sauce in there. That's my lunch. Um, so just a nice clean meal. I've got a lot of things to do today. I even made a list because I always forget like what I need to do. Um, I need to go buy TV bracket so I can mount my TV in my room. I need to buy this bedding thing that I want to get that you like put it over the top of your bed and it makes your mattress really soft. They're like little cones. You just get them at like Kmart. I had it on my old bed at my mum's house and it makes the biggest difference. I know you're probably like, yeah, I'm sure that won't make much of a difference, but it's like sleeping on clouds. No, my camera bag just broke the zipper on it. I've had this bag for like over a year since I first started vlogging and I literally carry it everywhere with me. I just take this bag, it's got my car key in there, it's got my wallet, and obviously my camera. And I just, I love it. Now I'm gonna have to go get a new one. All right, first stop, Kmart. I'm gonna grab that thing for my bed, and then hopefully I'll be able to head over to Harvey Norman if I've got enough time, and grab the um, TV mount. I took a picture of the back of the TV so I knew what model exactly it was because I don't really know which ones to get don't really know much about them but hopefully they'll be able to help me out when I get there so yeah let's go grab this thing for the bed quickly yeah good old Barclay Square I found the bedding section now we just got to find these cover things oh here we go underlay geez just my luck they got the underlays but they don't have any king size ones they only got single bed Queen. Standard. Alright. Next shop. That was a waste of time. Wow. Look at the traffic on the way to get to Harvey Norman. Red. Yellow. 22 minutes. It should be like 10 minutes down the road. <sighs> this is why I prefer to just order shit online. Because then you don't have to worry about the store not having it. And then you don't have to sit in the traffic to go and get it. But I didn't know which TV mount to order. So that's why I was going to go to the store. But now that I think about it, I'm just going to call them and say this is the tv i got can you just order it for me send it to my house and then i'm going to look up that thing on kmart and we we'll gonna do the same thing and we're just going to go home now and finish editing up a vlog all right done finish goodbye
ordering it online. I'm ordering the advanced tilt so that you can have a little bit of sway to it, you know? So they've even got this cool little chat thing because I didn't really know, you know, I was saying that I didn't know which one to order. Well, when you're browsing, this chat thing pops up and they're like, we can help you. And I'm like, great. <laughs> and I'm like, is it going to hold my TV, the Samsung 55 inch? And he's like, yeah, it would. I'm like, done. So, problem solved. Didn't have to send the traffic, didn't have to go talk to them about which TV I had and this and that. Online, I love it. And the best thing about it is, check this out. You just pay via PayPal. Life made easy. On to the next shop, Target. So, this is what I couldn't find in the uh, store before, but it's just these little cones that you put over the top of your mattress, and this shit will change your life. Even though I got a pretty good mattress as is, you can always step it up a little bit, so. <laughs> Lucky, they've got them online. King size, only a few left. Add to basket. Yes. Yes. Pay with PayPal. I love PayPal life. All right, guys, so, just about to head out to dinner with my mum and my brother, but I just had a landscaper come and um, look at my backyard because it is a mess. Since I moved in, I haven't really given any attention to doing up my backyard because I've just been focused on doing it up the inside because when I moved in, it was winter time, and now that it's summertime, I'm like, I better get it, you know, organized. I'm gonna give you guys a quick squeeze at it. It's pretty messed up, but like, we got this beautiful Amazon looking tree here with the rustic dirt. Then we've got some more crazy ass trees. We got a hectic looking clothing hanger. And this is this junk of a table that I just threw out today, which I don't know where to put it. So I just threw it out here. Anyway, I'm getting things done today. I bought the TV mount from a wall. I got rid of this table, which is just sitting at the front de door, doing my head in. That thing for my bed, and then the landscaper came. But anyway, we're gonna go to Universal for dinner. Guess what I'm gonna get? Oh yeah! You know if you're doing cardio while you're watching this, you wanna have a piece of this bruschetta. <laughs> and we got some chicken wings for the entree. Yep, you know it. I'm ordering a gnocchi with the poly sauce and what'd you get? Mar Mark got the marinara and Alex got the schnitzel with the gravy. I only had like probably two meals today, so left a bit of room for this dinner. It's like half half, yeah. Look at that gnocchi. It's gonna be one of the biggest chicken schnitzels I've ever seen in my life. What'd you get, mum? Marinara. Is it spaghetti or gnocchi? Gnocchi. Oh. I just got plain old gnocchi with the poly sauce. Nothing special going on here. You load it up with cheese. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. And then, chilies. Alright. I'm gonna dig into this.